Welcome back, everybody, to episode 20 of the Pod D podcast. Now, you might be a little thrown off because you're hearing a different voice than you normally would hear. What we're doing is we're taking a turn, letting everybody quarterback this thing and seeing how it works and seeing how you all feel about it. So you got Rodney, uh, a.k.a. Hot Rod, a.k.a. Rizzle, guiding you through this next hour and su- hour and change. So we got four to five horsemen with us tonight. Um, just like the Wu-Tang, we can't get everybody together. So we got we got Ant with us. We missing uh we missing Sid. So that means we won't have a deep thought question of the day. However, we do have a fan question. Yes, we have fans. So I am going to post this question to the group, um, and we're gonna uh, give a little give a little uh, information and help help out somebody's love life. It looks like. So, Christina G. What's up, Christina? Appreciate you uh, checking us out and uh, helps being with us as we traverse through this podcast thing. Christina G. has a question. What's up, Pod Deep? I have a dilemma and want advice. My husband of 14 years recently admitted he cheated on me. I suspected it because he he started acting funny and confront and I confronted him last week. He says it was only once and he's not attached to the young lady. He didn't have a good reason for why he cheated. Our kids are grown. What should I do? Stay or leave or cheat as payback. So who want to be first to give Christina a little bit of advice? I'll go first. All right, Jay. Stay or leave or cheat? Well, you probably can't cheat now because you just said you're going to cheat, Christina. Um, I say try to work it out. Try to figure out what the issue is. Kids are grown, so, you know, you've probably been together for a long time. I say maybe try counseling. Try to work it out before you just cheat or just leave. Don't throw away, you know, all the history. I say try to work it out. I say, go, I say go to the doctor, get tested, uh, get counseling, and then have an open conversation with your husband about where you all at in your relationship. Um, if you feel like you need to cheat, you don't have to cheat. You know, at this point, if you all uh, if you want to go another direction, you just you just tell your husband. Um, I know you probably still love that man. That man probably still love you. But at the, at this moment, y'all probably need to talk that out. If he give you a pass, um, it's a cold world out there. You know, you all talk that out first. But I'm, I'm not here to tell you to get a divorce. Uh, I definitely think you need to see if you have anything. Uh, and I definitely think you need to get counseling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, those are all very sensible answers. What about you? What do you think? I would say you got to tough it out. Ain't no marriage going to be perfect. If he slipped up, get counseling, try to get to the solution of why he slipped up, try not to let it happen again, and move on with your marriage. Um, so it's on me, right? Yep. Everybody gator. Okay. Um, well, of course she shouldn't cheat his payback. Um, they've been married for 14 years. I'm guessing she's in her mid thirties, forties, whatnot. So that's just not the type of behavior you should have at that age. Um, so stay Stay or leave. Okay, so if you got if you're gonna stay, are you woman enough to to deal with uh what he might tell you? You know, now you say this woman don't mean nothing, but if you all gonna work through it, you know that, that means counseling. So there may be some things that he gonna tell you about yourself that are you ready to are you ready to handle? Can you deal with it? Um, I don't think uh, 
cheating is the, is the answer. So if you're going to stay, make sure your heart's in it. Uh, because I've been in situations where if my heart wasn't in something, whether it be relationships, a job, anything, if my heart wasn't in it 100 percent, then no matter how bad I wanted it, it, ne it never worked out. So. Christina, I hope everything works out for you. You know, obviously we're not doctors. We may play them on a podcast, but, you know, we're not in real life. So take what we say with a grain of salt. Yeah. Right. So that was that, that was dope. We got our first fan question. That is uh, definitely a first for us. It's our second fan question. Our second fan question. What I missed. What was the first one? Man, I can't even remember. Go back. Everybody go back. One episode, one or two episodes, and you you'll you will find that fan question. It wasn't it no. like the Lavelle Crawford uh, episode? No, it was the one about was, if you hit a car. If you hit somebody's car, would you? Um, oh yeah. Would you tell them? <laughs> oh, I must not, I must not been on that episode. No, uh, your mic froze up. That's the episode I was in. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, eighteen. Yeah. All right, so moving on. So there was a, a little bit of a dust up this week with 21 Savage. He made some comments about Mr. Nazir Jones being irrelevant to today's audience, today's uh, today's fans. So this, I, I know we'll have a lot of uh, discussion on this one. So I'm gonna throw it to I'm gonna throw it to Jay. Go ahead. Let me let me hear what you got to say on this one. That goddamn cocksucker! <laughs> Don't you ever disrespect Nas the Great. What was what the what was wrong with him? Why would he even say that? Being on the high that he's on, why would you even let that come out of your mouth? How Nas is not relevant when Nas is on his like fifth comeback? It's stupid. I don't know why he would say something like that. He's not even like. A, a young kid to the point where he's ignorant about you know rap history to say something like that. That dude has to be at least pushing thirty. He knows who Nas is. He was just out of pocket to me. That's that's the only way I can um, put it. Just out of pocket, out of line. And you see other people, even younger rappers, have stepped up and said, "Wait a minute, you don't know what you're talking about." Like Kodak Black was quoting um uh, the Nas song "I Can." Um, the dude. Uh, uh, what's his name? Fabio, Fabio Foreign, I think is his name. Yeah. He said, "Hold up, no, Nas is relevant. Chill out. I he, I was on his last album that won a Grammy. So, uh, Twenty One Savage is way out of pocket, man. I did not like that. That rubbed me the wrong way completely. I got a feeling he' gonna be somebody swerp of the week. <laughs> man, <laughs> I agree. I I, I think what he should have said is Nas is not relevant in my generation or the generation under me. You know, that would probably make more sense uh, or, or the argument what he was trying to make. But Nas just won a Grammy a year ago in 2021 for King's Disease, the first the first value. You know what I'm saying? Uh, here you have an artist that came, that debuted his first album in 1994. And whenever he puts out a new album, he gets a rollout. So I don't think 21 Savage really, and he said that in, in the interview that he must not know what the word relevant means. And he, in his statement, he was saying, you know, he still make good ass music. He has a strong fan base. Well, if he still make good ass music, he got a strong fan base. He just won an award. That makes him relevant, you know? But is he relevant to 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 the young teenagers? Maybe he's not, you know. But yeah, he's relevant because he's getting nominated for 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 album of the year, and he won that last year. So you can't say that he's not relevant. And you know, I kind of took it when when I when when I heard it, I kind of took it as that's what he meant is that he's not relevant to like today's you know generation. But he's he got a old like old head fan base and they support him. But as far as like the eighteen to twenty five year old, he don't have he's not re relevant to them. 
That's that's how kind of how I perceived it. Yeah, that's but that's how he should have he should have cleaned it up, but he didn't clean it up. You got to understand Nas on on King Disease. The first one he went and got Fabio. He went and got Lil Durk. So he doing the smart things of the collaboration. He he got a boogie. He's reaching out to the to today's young hot stars. He has a young hot producer in Hit Boy. So yeah, he definitely relevant. He definitely know what's going on with the time. You know, when he drop his albums, it's on our platforms. It gets it gets talked about, you know. Hey, let me ask ask a question. Let's say he cleaned it up and said it perfectly. I'm just going to pose this question. Is it hate? Is he still hating? Like, wh why would he no. even bring that up? I mean, I don't I wouldn't say well, it all depends on the context of the conversation. Yeah. Um, I personally, you know, had you all's feelings at, at first when I heard it. But then as I got to mellow on it a little bit, I under I understood, you know, where where he was coming from because I I give it to you like this: Was Curtis Blow relevant to us? Was Cool Hurt, Melly Mel, all what were any of them relevant to us? I mean, they were all pioneers of hip hop, but they weren't relevant to our generation. Right. So I could that's why I could I kind of under I kind of understood where he was coming from well where i thought he was coming from well, well let's just say this relevant. they weren't relevant to our generation because we lived in the midwest but if you take our generation that lives on the east coast where hip-hop started in new york they're relevant to them you know our our age of generation us living in the midwest we still listen to r&b song hip-hop hasn't hit us at that point but for the people that live in the bronx and in queens they see them they were little kids watching the party. So we all may be the same age, but they lived around it. So to them, they relevant. They, they looked at as gods, but we didn't know them at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think about the age of when you first heard your hip hop song and when you actually got into it, you're like a teenager. Mm, maybe. You know, I think I think they more like they more of a god to the generation before us not necessarily i mean and i get what you're saying about the east coast but i think they're more of a more of a um more of god to a generation before us like the jay-z's that like jay-z's in his 50s you know that generation i think that would be more of a god to them but like underneath i mean our age i don't i don't know if they they would be looked at the same way like like, when the, last, when the last time you heard somebody big up Special Ed? You know, my thought was he was using this as a publicity stunt to try to reach our generation. Saying buzzwords, going out to Nas. Nas going to make me, you, listen to this cat to see what he really about. So I'm thinking he was trying to reach us and the best way to reach us is to piss off one of our top ones. Yeah. But it don't make sense to say that. The only thing I'm just thinking, how can I get our demographic to listen to his stuff? Say what he said about Nas. That's good. That's a fair, that's a valid point. Because mm -hmm. to be to, to be fair with you, 21 is not relevant to us. Not at all. <laughs> He's not relevant to us. We no. ain't never heard of him until that. And then it's, it'll make you be like, "What? who is this dude? Let we me just, listen to him. We and just know did. him through collaborations. Drake, you know, J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? We just know. But I never really, you know, uh, took the time to listen to a 21 album. Yeah, I know who he is, but I, I agree with that. I've never heard an album, which, you know, I probably never will. Yeah. Besides the Drake album. Right, right, right. But and that's just, a, that's just a fair question. No matter how good you are, you can't hit all the generations of rap. No matter how good you are. It, you know, not all the generations are going to accept you, you know. But still, but even I as, a, I as a... I, go ahead, Jay. Even as a fan, I still wouldn't say so-and-so is not relevant. I would just say, no, I don't listen to it. No, nah, that's... I 
that's 100 percent fact. I wouldn't I disres- think, disrespect anybody like that. Yeah, because I think I think any MC from 21 Savage generation and below, if Nas reach out to them to do a song, they'll do a song in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. He's that kind of MC. You know what I'm saying? And, pl- it, and, and it wouldn't also, be an odd connection. Also, I don't. I mean, I don't think you need to. Be, you should be relevant in all age brackets because right. you shouldn't like. What the hell am I going to rap about that's going, you know, that a 15, 16 year old, 17 year old is going to vibe with? Like we, we, we in two two different levels. So, you know, I mean, if I, you know, if he, if he is relevant to this generation, then that just goes to show you how dope he is, you know, but in theory, hey, he shouldn't, he shouldn't be relevant to them. He should be a God to the people who grew up on his music in the same age as him. So, you know. That's a fact, because you're not going to be able to to flow with a guy who owns this, owns this, and owns that, and you rap, everything you rap is a lie. You know, you still live with your mom. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you, you're not going to be able to follow that up when you're talking about he got, he got houses in different coasts and all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you having trouble playing for studio time, you know, so. That's- I think it's more of a publicity stunt, That's and he's trying to get Nas to react and say something, and that that makes him relevant. Yeah, that's a good point. So he trolled. Yeah. But yeah, then he, he trolled. Back, but then he come back and try to and kind of clean it up a little bit. Yeah, he did. Okay. Right. He cause he still did what he wanted. He got us talking about. It. All right. Good point. Yeah. Even if that wasn't his intention, it did put attention on him. Yeah. So. Now. I wouldn't be surprised. He he got to drop some, and they got to be hot. But I ain't listening to it regardless. <laughs> and I want to yeah. say, just make one one point about uh, Nas, his relevancy to the younger generation or, or whatever. You know, there are a lot. His fans are like in our age bracket, and his fans have kids. You know, younger kids. I'm just going to use my son as an example. When Nas came out with that Hit Boy album. My son texts me and say, did you hear Nas yet? So, you know, I turned my young son on to Nas where he's checking for new music. Now, he might not have his phone full of Nas albums, right. but he knows who Nas is. When a new album comes out, he checks for it. We, t- we go back and forth. Did you like it? I like this one better than this one. Mm-hmm. So it's not like all his fans are like grandfathers. He he has some younger fans. That's true. It's a good That's point. True. And, and, you know, that, that may... You saying that it kind of reminded me of a situation I had with my son. Like he um what was it? It was ghost, it was Ghostface. It was a song off Iron Man. And you know, Iron Man came out in 96, obviously. Um, you know, we was a little slow to the to the East Coast vibe. <laughs> um so by the time I start really playing it, it's probably early to mid 2000s you know my son born in 97 and i'm not really paying attention you know to what i'm playing or anything like that mm-hmm. but then he get grown and he like man what what was the name of that ghostface song off that one album i'm like what <laughs> ghostface like how do, how you how how you on ghostface like you used to play it i'm like oh yeah you're right yeah so you know you never know you know what uh you never know who's listening i that's guess that's surprise. The moral to the story. Yeah, that's a fact. All right. So it seems that it's like fuck 21 Savage. It seems to be the the overriding thing. <laughs> so good segue into our next subject. So any of uh, our subscribers, listeners, if you've been with us for a while, you probably know that I am not the most in tune with today's rap. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much stuck in uh 90s early 2000 early to mid 2000s uh Bermuda Triangle so to speak. I can't get out. I don't want to get out actually. But I made it an effort. I made an effort to at least try. So I pose the question to the rest of the fellas. You know, they will bring they'll give me an artist or an album for me to review. I take a week, review it and then I come back for our next week's podcast, and I'll give my take on it. So for this week, 
ironically enough, it was 21 Savage and Drake's new album called uh, Her Loss. So I listened to it for a week. I listened to it on my phone. I listened to it through the TV. And then finally, I listened to it in my car. So I have to admit, by the time I listened, when I listened to, listened to it in my car, I had a better appreciation for it. Um, so uh, one, being, one being trash, 10 being a classic, I officially rate this album as a 5.75. Um, there's some catchy songs on there. But ultimately, Drake's voice annoys the shit out of me still. <laughs> you know, I, I thought I could get by it, but it still annoys the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the singing. It just, if I'm if I got a rap album, let me hear rap. I don't want to hear the singing. Um 21, he says his name, he and ad he ad libs his name too much for me in songs. Because it seemed like everyone out, every song I heard was 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. And that shit got on my nerves. Um, <laughs> ops. I heard the word ops like a hundred times. I'll be glad when they move on to a new a new word because that one got on my damn nerves. But um, yeah, overall, I would give it, I, you know, I, I'll go ahead and give it a six. I won't give it a 5.75. I'll give it a six. So on, on that scale, it's better than average, but not quite not quite dope to me. It's 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 an okay album for today's time. So I give it a six. How do you think it compares to the other collaboration albums? Best of both worlds, Jay Z, R. Kelly, Nas, and Damian Marley, uh, Kanye, and Jay Z, Watch the Throne. How do you think it compares to and what Birdman and um, R. Kelly? How do you think it, it Future and Drank? How do you think it compares to other collaboration albums? Like do well, they do they match? It probably, it probably it probably uh mesh. I mean, it probably compares to that first uh, best of both worlds album because Drake does a lot of singing, just like R. Kelly. Okay. And and so I will put. I, I yeah, I think that might be comparable to me because that album wasn't dope for, right. at all to me, but it wasn't trash either. Right. So it was, was kind of right there in the middle. It was on the fence. So to me, it's the same type type of album. But I don't know. I don't have the type of ear for this new music. But I mean, what is, is this a dope? Was it a dope album? I like it. I like. I'm sorry. I like. It. I didn't mean to step on you. No, you're... Yeah, I like it. It's a good album to me. It's solid. You know, if it's like your birthday, you partying. You're not mad at the DJ playing a couple of songs off of it. You may not know every song word for word. But the beat selection, I, I'm having trouble trying to see who's the star of that album, you know, because it's a good back and forth between, I would say 21 stepped up as an MC. He kind of shocked me. He with, did? With, yeah, he kind of shocked me. Uh, so I thought J. Cole brought out the best in him as a as a lyricist, as a, as a rapper. Uh, he kind of stepped up with, with Drake in his flowing, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think Drake took I didn't think Drake took off on him on one song to the point to where it's like, uh man, it's hard, it's gonna be hard for 21 to follow him. You know, I thought by the time he stepped on the microphone, he got the flow, he caught the wave, and it's a good, it's a good back and forth, you know. You think that's by design? Um, I think it when you're competitive and you you're a writer and one guy is is a trapper, your your goal should be to murder him on that track. But if you're if you if you bringing your stuff down, you're not going you're not going to help them as an MC. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to take your stuff up, and you should be able to follow. And it's going to be. But, but if you take your stuff down, don't that bring him up? Because nah, you're not because you're not outshine. Because if you really put your foot in it, you out you could blow him out the water to where whatever he put out, people going to be you know be ready to skip. Well, see if he, if he if he kind of bring it down to where okay. I'm not going. I'm and I, I'm not even saying this is what he did, but I'm just throwing it out there. Like, what if what if Drake decided that I'm just going to take it easy on this one? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let 21 do his thing. Well, see, when I think about the best of both worlds, that's what I thought happened. I thought R. Kelly 
was way up here. And what I expected from Jay Z, I didn't I didn't get on on any song. Well, Jay, well that was during the period where Jay Z started running out of gas, in my okay. opinion. Well, yeah, so that I found that out, but you know, I didn't expect that going into going into the uh, album. I didn't expect that, you know. So, I didn't I didn't feel that from from the twenty ones uh, and Drake her lost album that uh, Drake was just so dominant the word twenty one couldn't you know he couldn't catch up with him. Jay, what you think? I think it was well produced, well planned. Good beats. I think they complement each other on this one. I think like uh, Future and Drake used to be with their joint albums at the beginning. They used to get accused of like Drake having like some extra throwaway songs that Future just hopped on or vice versa where, you know, Future just had some unfinished songs and Drake came on and did a rap and you know, they made a song out of it. But this right here to me seems well planned. If you go back to Drake's last album, which was that dance disco y type of house music type of album. Yeah. And he had 21 Savage on the end, that Jimmy Cook's album. He kept him on that one. What he was trying to say is, this is my new direction. Yeah, I'm doing all these dance poppy songs, but I'm getting back to that rap and it's going to be with 21 Savage. It, when, when people saw that song and heard the song, it seemed out of place. But basically, that was like the rollout for this new Her Loss album. So if you look at it that way and you look at how he rolled out this album with the fake interviews, he did like a fake Howard Stern interview, a fake um, Vogue magazine cover shoot, uh, like a parody of, you know, a Howard Stern interview and fake uh, a parody magazine shoot, stuff like that. Just the planning and the rollout. And you listen to the production, 21 Savage, Savage, how he stepped his lyrics up. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's a good album. I think I would put it on a short album of the list, album of the year list. I'm sorry. I would put it on a short album of the year, year list with um, that DJ Khaled album, uh, uh, Kendrick Lamar, this Drake and 21 Savage album. Uh, two other people I'm missing, you know, that had solid albums, but you know, I liked it. I think it's great. So, so Jay, what? So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, Squeak. Yeah, so one, I, so from one to ten, what do you give it? One to ten. Um, give it a solid eight. Okay. Give it an eight. So, so an uh, eight to me ain't ain't a solid album. To me, an uh, eight is damn near, damn near a classic. So. You you putting this one in at then well that was that's just my way of looking at it. To me, a solid album is like a six, seven. But when you're talking eight, you damn near getting in classic te territory. So that's what you're saying. I would call it an eight by this new album standard. Not not our old school al album standard. Okay. But you know that microwave, you listen to it one time maybe and it goes away type of standard. I think this album can stick around. I think. This is Drake gave people people who complain about Drake singing too much and they just want rap. He gave them rap. Now there's some singing on this album, but it's a whole <laughs> yeah. lot of Drake rapping. Yeah, that, yeah, that we haven't really gotten for the last two albums or so. Yeah. Uh and Banks, what you got what you got to say on this one? You know he didn't hear it. <laughs> I just found out who 21 Savage was last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 let me ask a quick question. Uh, between Drake and uh, Future, and Twenty One and Future, I mean Twenty One and, and Drake, which combination you like better? Future and Drake did an album. Yeah, like three, <laughs> two oh. or three. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, I guess I'll bow out on this one because I don't have any. Oh, you know what? I did like that one song they had on that. I guess I don't know what. Um, uh, what was the name of that song? This is the one working on the weekend, like usual. That's nah, not, that's it wasn't that. I, I never heard that. Where they at? Yeah, that's the song. Where they at? I did like that song with him and Drake. Where they? How they go? 
where they asses, where they at, where the asses at when I zoom, 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 where they asses. Oh, where I, your asses at when I was, yeah. okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I like that. That's a good so one. I did like that. I never, I mean, that's the only song I, I didn't know they did albums together. So maybe I'll have to go back. Yeah. So, uh, so that was cool. You know, we had a little, you know, little, I, I got a chance to really focus. I did my homework. I sat there and I listened to it in all formats. And I think I, like I said, I think I got a good feel for it and I'm, I'm going to stick with my six. I'm going to give it a six on the high rise scale of one to 10 being trash or a classic. I give it a six. And, um, so that brings me to my next point. So who, who, well, before we go on to our next subject, I'm going to throw it out to you all. What song, album, or artist should I go back and listen to for a week and then be able to report to you guys on our next podcast? I would say Benny the Butcher. Okay, we got one for Benny the Butcher. Jay? He wants you to go deep, underground. <laughs> um Currency. Pick a currency um album. Okay, currency. So with with, with Benny the Butcher from Buffalo. I, New York. I, I I get it. He with with Griselda, right? That's correct. So what 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 would I be looking for? I mean, a, a particular album or just so a, a, some few songs or what? What, what you could take? You could you could start you could start anything twenty eighteen from him. I'll go to years twenty twenty two. Start twenty eighteen. Nah, that's too much. I need, I, I need, I need y'all to narrow something down. Narrow me an app. Al- yeah, Beth, from here on out, we gonna uh, give me an album because okay. I don't want to be doing no deep dig and trying to find songs. So, give me an album of a particular artist or group that you want me to to uh, review. Okay, I could do so that. you had Benny the Butcher, Jay. You said Currency, uh, Aunt Banks. I ain't gotta ask you because. <laughs> You kind of probably on the same same level as I am with this. I'll, I'll say cool in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with currency. I've heard Benny. The, I think I've heard Benny the Butcher. I think, but I don't think I've ever heard currency. So I'm gonna go with currency. So give me an album of currency that you want me to review. Before we end the podcast, I'll have that album title for you. Gotcha. All right. So we're going to move on to our next subject. As I take a little drink of the the bubbly. So uh, here we go. As we all know, there was a movie that came out recently. Uh, It's a superhero movie. I kind of forget the title of it. Um, somebody, um, somebody want to give me a hand. What was the name of this 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 movie that came out? This is Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Okay, so Wakanda Forever. So, spoiler alert: if you have not seen the movie, you need to pause. You need to go to yeah. another podcast. Well, no, don't go to another podcast. Just just put this on mute for a second, and then I'll give right. you a thumbs up when it's time for you to to uh, tag top uh, tag back in. So. We're going, I mean, I'm sure everyone has saw it except me. So uh, we're going to uh, get everyone's thoughts. Uh, I'm going to go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. And go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go first. Okay. So going into this movie, I was expecting a lot. Okay. The best thing they did in this movie to me was end. Uh, give the ending to Chadwick Boseman the way you know, close that part of the chapter of Black Panther off right. and go on to the next. After the first 10 minutes of the movie, I could have went home and not watched nothing else. Oh, wow! <laughs> it took too long, not enough action. I don't like the way they went with the storyline and how to, I mean, me and my son was totally like, felt like we was kind of disappointed. We wasted two and a half hours. Wow. That's just my opinion on it. 
I feel like I feel like this was the beginning to try to set up future Black Panther, and I think those are going to be better. But for me, the initial setup of how they're trying to set up the new Black Panther and her new rivals, the villain that they that they're going to keep for the future, so they can make more movies. I think future movies is going to be better than this initial. It took a lot to unwind the old and start with the new, and it don't follow no comic because nowhere does T'Challa die that quick. They never got a chance to really get into him. So they just moved this up. I mean, it was two hours of a prequel to get you ready for the future Black Panther 3, 4, and 5 that I hope that'll be better. Okay. Whoa, yes. I wasn't expecting that. Someone with a thumbs down on Wakanda forever? <laughs> What's your thought, Jared? The pacing was excellent. The story was excellent. The villain was excellent. It was a great movie to me. It didn't feel like two and a half hours. It felt like it felt like rather oh. it just flowed. Um, it just flowed. It, it was it was a good movie to me. I don't have a. I didn't have any problems. I give it two thumbs up. So I love. Hold on, hold on. Can I can I comment on that? Right. But um, Jared, don't you feel like they started three or four different plots? in a movie, but they never finished it. They got three or four plot lines going and they really didn't finish. They just like introduced, it took them two and a half hours to introduce a villain. They got defeated way too easy after you made him so big. Uh, but kind of, I mean, it's, I just, it, it took so long to get there and then there wasn't no action to go with it. It wasn't a look, it didn't make you cry, it didn't make you do nothing. After the first 10 minutes, you just die. You you muted, Jared. Um, I like how they introduced the villain. Um, spoiler alert, when they attacked that um that ship, they were singing the song, getting people to jump off the ship. I think the way they introduced Namor or aka the submariner, uh Mariner was was good. I like the villain. Um, I was a little uncomfortable at some parts because I was in a theater full of um, Latinos or Hispanics. I'm not, not sure it was politically correct. You know, black and Latinos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to Kanye myself. But I was in a, respectfully, in a um, theater full of, um, you know, half black and half the crowd was um, Hispanic. And it was like uh, like a race war in the movie going on. Up until you know they squashed it at the end. Um, I liked it. The, let me get to your point specifically. Your point. They did have a lot of uh, different storylines going that are going to set up a Disney TV show. From what I hear, um, they're setting up Black Panther um, three. They're setting up the next Avenger movie. So, but this is what the Marvel movies do. They they splinter off and have these different plots and storylines going that always end up, you know, in the next movies. So, you know, I don't have an issue with it. I liked it. It's way better than the first Black Panther. So let, let me jump in. Let me jump in. Ooh. Let me jump in and say this. You have Black Panther, you have Captain America, you have Iron Man, and you have Thor. If you erase any one of those guys from, from their movie, you have no movie. Black Panther is the only movie where you can take the main star and continue the storyline. If you remove Iron Man from Iron Man, you have nobody to carry that movie. The cast. Who, who, who's, who, who in the Iron Man cast but, that can carry a movie? Well, I'm just saying it's just like they did with Black Panther. No, Iron no, Man's no. understudy is um, Falcon. Man, Falcon. Ain't nobody going to the. The theater to see that they barely saw the TV. They barely saw the TV show on Disney Plus. So if you if you remove, I'm barely Thor, going to see this. If you remove Thor from from Thor, nobody's going to to, to the theaters to see a Thor movie without Thor. Nobody's going to the movie theaters. If you remove Captain America from Captain America, nobody's going to the movie theaters to see that movie without Captain America. 
the reason why Black Panther started off so well is because the movie started off with a prayer. Shuri is a, is a scientist in the movie that didn't believe in the after the after world. So the first thing she did was pray to the, to the baddest, the, the goddess, the Black Panther goddess, to give her the strength to heal her brother, right? So you see that she failed at that. So that part right there was emotional because going into the movie, nobody knew how they were going to continue this storyline without Chadwick. That was actually real. So you have a, a real a real individual, Chadwick Boseman, that actually died in real life, and he's playing the lead actor in this movie, and that's how they dealt with that death, is that they use his real life situation. Go ahead, Ant, what you got a question on? Why did they have to give it to the girl? Because I thought they had something when they had the, um, the other dude, Michael B. Jordan, come back. I said, now nah, that would have been a twist, and Black Panther would have... I thought that would have made it better for me as keeping him as a male. Why did they put him as a female? It happened in the comic books. Shuri took the mantle of Black Panther in the comic books, so that's not nothing new. And what she did, and, and what Ryan Kruger did a great job of, he took an individual who loved her brother but didn't have any faith in, in, in what their tradition was, right? So even her mother had a hard time trying to, you know, calm her down and talk her through things. And she was more connected to her cousin Killmonger with the with the with the things that he did from the first movie of of, of burning up the the uh what I'm saying, trying to say the uh, not the ore, but the plant that that they used to to get the powers for Black Panther. I like how they brought uh, Namor. I like how Ryan Kruger introduced the the mutants into the the Marvel uh, universe for for a long time. Uh, Marvel fans been waiting for the mutants to come into the MCU uh, universe, and so they took the first mutant. That, that's ever been written in the comic book and, and brought them in. And they couldn't do it how they wanted to do it because DC ripped them off and used Aquaman. So Aquaman has his own standalone movie and Namor is really the, the, the leader of Atlantis. So they switched that storyline and made him the leader of this false world, Talacan, you know, which is <laughs> Aztec and all that type of thing. So that brought in a different culture right into the midst of Black Panther, which I thought was a great which was a great spin on things because you have Na Namor, who's a very strong character. I thought Shiri did a great job of acting. She was very emotional. She was very, um, she had more hatred in her system. But in the end of the movie, I found myself being very emotional from the beginning of the movie to the middle of the movie to the end of the movie. I thought it was a great job. I thought the entire cast did a good job. At times, they had comedy in a movie that was very serious. I've never been to a movie theater for a superhero movie, and I'm fighting back tears and stuff because it just emotionally, you know, brought me in and stuff like that. I'm a fan. I grew up a fan reading the book and stuff like that, so I was always wondering how they was going to pull this movie off, and I thought Ryan Kruger in the entire um, cast did a great job and they have multiple setups. I like the introduction of Riri Williams. I thought she was very funny. Uh, that's the new Ironheart uh, TV series that's going to be coming on Disney+. Plus. Um, the young lady, I can't think of her name right now. Uh, I want to say her name is Victoria that, that played the uh, at Agent Ross' uh, wife. She's like the leader of the Thunderbolts and stuff like that. So that's another spinoff they got. Um Okoye probably has a spinoff coming uh, on Disney Plus, uh, a Black Panther spinoff coming that Ryan Kruger will be directing. I know it's going to be a good job. Like I said before, you can't remove the main character from any of those other Marvel movies and think you're going to get a, a good script or a good movie like what happened to Chadwick and, and, and Ryan Kruger and the Black Panther family. You know, I thought for everything that he had to work with, he did an amazing job and he turned, um, you know, lemons into lemonade. I thought he did an amazing job. And I'm going back again tomorrow and next week. So, so you going you, you finna see this movie for a second and third time. So yeah, this is what I do. I, I, I support it each week and I, I do different theaters and I do big screens. So, uh, first week I went on the 10th of uh, November, I did the IMAX, 
tomorrow I'll probably try to do the the X theater, which I think is bigger than the uh, IMAX. So it's, it's so so. What are you 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 looking for a different experience each time or? So that's how you could tell that you got a. That's how you could tell that you when when I like something, I like it. And I could tell if it's good or if I'm on a high. You know what I'm saying? Like the, like the, the first Black Panther. When I went to see it the second time, I didn't think that I would like it as good as I did. But I did. I saw more things that I didn't see the first go around. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to see if that emotional uh, effect is still going to be there. I, I like this. So I, I, it's things I want to break down, you know. Wow. He ain't making it through the third. He ain't getting to number three. After two. I got the number. I got man. You know how long I've been waiting on this movie. This movie was supposed to come out. This movie was supposed to come out in uh, 2020. This movie was right. supposed to come out in 2020. Like to me, they had to start over. The first Black Panther was to set up to get it, and then they didn't get a chance to expound. So they had to start over. And to me, all the Marvel movies, when they introduce the character, how they got their powers, them be the worst ones for me. So they had to start over again. I really wouldn't judge the Black Panther series into the next one. If they don't do good on the next one, then they fail to me. Uh, I, did. I totally disagree, but I respect your opinion. I totally disagree. And to, you know, to me, I like the villains more than the superhero. So the best the first Black Panther, which one, which one was a villain? Uh, Michael B. Jordan? No. He's hey, that's, your, that's your opinion. <laughs> Michael G. So in the first Black Panther, the Black Panther is the villain. Killmonger is the hero. Man, I'm, you too deep. Think about it. Think about it. You live in this country, right? Somebody coming somebody come to deliver you vibranium weapons so you can defend yourself and, 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 and mobilize. Which one of them you riding with? You riding with the guy that's trying to keep him from bringing them weapons to you? Are you riding with the guy that's going to bring the weapons to you? I'm going to disagree. The <laughs> villain was Michael B. Jordan. He's the hero. Everybody, to me, Black Panther was trying to defend his own best way he see fit. And that's all. That's that's what the Black Panther is. He tried to defend Wakanda. That's why they've never been. They That's why they hid themselves from the outer world because you seen in the beginning of the second one. Mm -hmm. They come, again, that didn't even make sense. They had the army come in so that the mom can prove that y'all like we will we could destroy y'all at any time. And then they just let that go. And Black Panther took uh Killmonger's plan. He killed him and took his plan. So his plan, his Black Panther's original plan was keep quiet. We stay a secret. Killmonger's plan was tell the world. And at the end of the movie, on the first movie, he went to the he went to the to UN and told everybody about Wakanda. No, he you know, changed it. He had a change. He just had a change of heart of why keep it a secret. I could we can do more help out there. And yeah, that's Killmonger. That's Killmonger plan. That's Killmonger plan. Okay, we're gonna agree to disagree. We're gonna oh. agree to disagree. Okay. 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 Well. If we got a bunch of Wakanda, Wakanda Forever lovers, you probably enjoyed every minute of this. <laughs> if you like me, you struggle to keep away. <laughs> you should hey, instead of reviewing them albums, go review, go go look at the movie and come back with a review. If you're having a hard time yeah. going to sleep, go to the movie. I can't I cash I cash out you the money. I cash out you the money. No need, no need. Save that money. I'll I'll <laughs> rather I'll rather listen to music than to nah. dive into this <laughs> thing we call Black Panther. So we got one thumbs down, we got two thumbs up, and then I'm sure Squeak, you got like 17 thumbs up, right? 12 That's thumbs right. up. Give me a hey, quickly, quickly, Hughes, is it the best Marvel movie? Where does it rank? So if you're not including any of the Avengers, yes. It has the most emotion. It has the most story depth. It has the most build up. Yeah, it's the it's, it's the best to me. It's the one that 
was the realest. I could say yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you 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 dealt with a main character that actually died, and you put a mixture of that in there, and it's certain lines that they're saying that you ain't really tell that they're acting. Or you know what you know what I'm saying like I really love the character Shuri. I thought her acting was phenomenal. I thought the lines that Angela Bassett delivered about her losing her family was phenomenal. Yeah, that movie had me emotionally attached. How did Angela Bassett look in the movie? Amazing. Looks very good. Amazing. Show her, did they show her backside? Yeah. No, she, she didn't. Did. No, she did. No. Okay. He if she did, saw, I missed it. You missed. saw it. Yeah. He was looking at me. No, 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 microscope. <laughs> my, my glasses thing, you know, it wasn't working at that. <laughs> he, was in a, he was in a projector room with the film. <laughs> 60 plus years old, and she still do it Beautiful. for me. So I, I, I just got one thing to refute. You mean to tell me that this is better than Spider Man? Yes. Come on, man. Yes. All right. We don't agree or disagree. Yeah. I think Spider-Man is the best Marvel movie outside of Avengers that you're going to get. I like Spider-Man, but I'm, I'm connected to Black Panther. All right. We're going to kill all this superhero talk, and we're going to okay. move on to our next subject. All right. So I got to admit, I am an uninformed host because I did not see the Dave Chappelle monologue. So what I will do is I will go back and I'll take a look at that and maybe I'll give a give my opinion on that one later on down the road. Uh, with the Kanye and Kyrie situations, I've kind of been going back and forth on them because I know initially I kind of said, hey, you know, you, you do this, you say this, you get what you deserve. You know, you can't do you can't right. be anti-Semitic. You can't do this. You can't be anti-gay, whatever. You right. can't do those things and whatever you get. And you know, in return, you deserve. But so it just, I kind of go back and forth because, like with Kyrie, like Kyrie, you know, I would say he's ultra black. He's pro black with everything that he with the with his, his what he says and with his actions. He's pro black. Mm -hmm. And when anytime you get someone like that, anytime you have someone that talks about that stuff, you know. Mainstream tries to mitigate that. Yeah, they try to mitigate it. They try to flip it to be reverse racism, you know. And if 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 anything says anything about a Jew, now you're anti-Semitic. And once they put that anti-Semitic brand on you, you know, you kind of done. So, like I said, I go back and forth with that because I Kyrie is kind of what we need. We need people. We need our act, our, our athletes, and our actors to be pro black, to be, um, to be activists. Actually, because um, it means more to the average person when they see someone famous out there being an activist, um, being pro black. It means more. I have a question. And Banks, what's up? When you see that. And then you also see how they strip him and take all his money endorsements. Don't that scare you? Be like, I that's can't perfect. do that. That that's that's basically lynching. That's lynching. That's modern day lynching. You know what I'm saying? You you seeing your favorite individual athlete, musician being stripped of everything. So how do you combat that? You because because is is piping down the answer? No, piping down is not the right. answer. You combat right. that by making your own, right? Which which would take you forever. You know what I'm saying? It's the it's the conversation that we all have that we don't have diversity. We don't we don't work together. We don't buy we don't buy things together. We don't build anything. So if you always getting things from from what they call your oppressor, and you start talking out of line, you will get dealt with. Go ahead, Ant. Why can't powerful black men get behind Kyrie. That's I mean, right. I'm more on Kyrie than Kanye, but right, that, right. he ain't, he's saying like Rodney said, he's pro-black. Well, why can't we get behind him and be like, no, he only saying the truth and what he believe. And so we shouldn't we get, be, he shouldn't be punished like this. Right, because I agree. We, we get behind him to do what? Though. We get behind him to do what? Like like what, what they did, what we did to, what they, 
what our ancestors did to Martin Luther King, just get right behind him. And, and when they shot him down, everybody scattered. We get behind him to do what? Make him the full target, the front target? Well, uh, <laughs> no, more so of continuing, don't, don't let people shut us up because we're going to be afraid of what they're going to do. Voice the same opinion. If if you feel if we feel the way or if we agree with some of the things that he agree with, we can't be afraid to say it. We got to get behind him and say, "I agree with him." If if you if we agree with Kyrie, why can't other strong black presidents say the same thing? Say, "Hey, I agree with what he his beliefs." Shit, we all got things to lose, Ant. You got to go you back. I'm sorry, you got to go back to what Rodney said. You don't mess with Jewish people, the gay community, or pets. So, you, but you so just... at, at some point, that has, you know, well, I put it, oh, I guess I'll pose a question. Can that be, can that be broken? That's fine. Because who are, who are the influential people in, 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 in uh, entertainment? sports um the people behind the scenes that we don't know anything about who are those people you know a lot of a lot of a lot of those people are jewish a lot of those people are homosexuals so it's almost like the people that are in pop there that are in the people that have the ability to cancel or get rid of or shut you up they're the people that 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 they that you're talking about, right? You know, but but one thing about it is like, and it's, uh, so if, so if I sit here and say, look, Jewish people have been exploiting black people for hundreds for a hundred years. Am I anti-Semitic because of that statement? The statement made by Rodney does not reflect the views of, of Pi You follow what we got to do? It's just a question. Right, yeah. I follow. So if, if, if I say the Jews have been exploiting blacks for, for hundreds of years or for hundred years, does that make me anti does that, does that make me anti-Semitic? Because to me, it sounds like if you make a if you say something like that, if it's not put in Jew, Jewish people in a positive light is going to automatically be anti-Semitic. But but you have to, that statement is powerful and you have to back that up with facts. When somebody questions you to say, what do you mean by that? Give me an example. Right. The music industry? Say it again. The music industry? Okay, so did they put a gun in anybody head and, and say, go ahead, rap or sing? I mean, or is that, is that our fault for having the talent and just going to somebody and letting them take everything from you. So, so is 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 that going to be the 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 baseline? If someone, do, as long as someone doesn't put a gun in your head, then it's all good. Shit, I mean, listen, the contract. You get what you negotiated in the contract, even though you didn't know, right? You get what you negotiated in the contract. So when you, when you sign in the contract and they're giving you your your signing bonus, everybody is clapping and, and you excited. The longer you go in your career, you start learning about different things, show money, back end money. And you're like, oh, they, I got screwed. Where my, where's my masters? Where's my publishing? You didn't know any of that. You didn't ask. You didn't come with no lawyer. You know so what I'm saying? So, so, it's, so, it's their, so it's your fault. On that they, part, yes. On that they, part, it's, it's up to you to educate yourself. Yeah. It ain't nobody. I can't blame another party. For me not educate myself in in the industry that I mean, and, a, and no, another because, thing is because that, how are you going? But but see, that 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 sounds good. But who at twenty one is educated? But see, who, who, but, at, who at nineteen have the know how? But Ronnie, that's our fault because when you get a bad deal, what you cannot do is keep that to yourself. You have to educate the individuals that come behind you. You have so many. You have so many actors and so many artists that we were led to believe that are rich and, and this this living this lifestyle. And it turns out they don't own any of their masters. They're broke. They got to go on tour for the rest of their damn lives and, and, and do these shows. And they and they have nothing. They die with nothing. And one, two albums that, that sold 
are feeding those lawyers and those business owners, uh, grandkids and grandkids afterwards. You know what I'm saying? It's feeding generation after generation because all they did is provided a platform and got all the riches off the album, got all the riches out of the contract. I believe back in the day, they took advantage of our ignorance. But 2021, 22, it should be, it shouldn't be able to be happening now because we got access to too much information. But we still not doing what we should do, Anthony. We don't have we we don't have one African American football owner in the league. We don't we only have one African American NBA owner. We're not forming our own leagues. We're not coming together. We're not doing any of that thing. We're not we're not building networks. We're not building schools. We're not forcing our children to attend these historical black colleges. And these historical black colleges, some of them don't even have programs that that we cater to, track and field football. We're not working with each other. We're not creating a real legacy among the African-American community. We're not, we're not as African-Americans, we're not networking with, with our brothers and sisters in Haiti, Jamaica, or Africa. We're not, we're not networking around the world. We're not, bi- we're not building businesses that are that are global. That 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 speaks to the other Africans that that are in the UK and stuff like that. We're not we're not doing those things, and we are all educated in the United States. We're forced to go to school from the first grade all the way to the twelfth grade. So that's twelve years of your life that you're you're educated. But by the time you graduate from high school, you still don't know how to fi- you don't know about finance. You don't know how to buy a car. You don't know how to get your own apartment. It's a lot of damn things. You think of twelve years of your life. And you still don't know these things. That says a lot. Of, that says a lot of system. That's another thing that. But so you blaming you blaming us for that one? No. Hell yeah. Hell you, yeah. So, because, because so you're blaming you look us at it like this, Rodney. You're blaming we us for leaning not te- on, for we not are leaning on oppressors to teach us. We're not teaching each other. We're leaning on people who don't give a damn about us to educate us. So how do you how do you edu- so I'm a six year old seven no I'm 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 twelve thirteen I'm let's say I'm ten or eleven and I'm right. in school and they're not teaching me how that's, to do certain things. That's, that's my fault. That's that's all. I believe it starts with our generation. We got to teach our kids. That's a fact. Like, like, like. Right now, we teach Ty, my son, about how to buy stocks, how you look at it. That's great. Introducing it. That's great. You know, teach them how to invest. You got that's on us to start teaching our lower generations, that's so great. then they can start coming. Right now, it's gonna take a few decades of. Like it ain't gonna be my generation. It's gonna be my son's son's generation that hopefully reap the benefit. But we got to start teaching what we know. That's a fact, and that's what you are saying. We got to start educating ourselves because the other people ain't gonna educate us. I get you. I get you. But I'm talking. I'm not talking about today because we all know that we're exposed to much more information than we ever were right back in the day. But I'm talking about back in the day. I'm not talking about 2022. I'm talking about 1985. Okay. Like, oh yeah. Like, like how? Like, how are you going? Like, how you can't point the finger at someone for not knowing what they didn't know. Nah, now, that, it, now, if it happens now, I get it. I get it. There's too much information out there for you to get a 360 deal in in um in in music. Mm-hmm. But music is just you know that's that's paltry. I'm thinking more long term. I'm thinking you know. Like, Bank, bank loan, like like getting a bank loan, going to the bank and, and getting uh, you know, getting a, getting the right appraisal for your house, you know. People I look at, huh? Back in the day, they didn't have a chance. They threw money at them, and we didn't have money. You got to remember back back in them times, we was just getting out of slavery. So whatever money that they was getting, they I ain't would take that. More. Nah, keep keep that keep that point, Ant. So you said they we, was just we, getting. We didn't have money. You got to remember back in '85, how many black millionaires were there? 
So, so, so back that up. T take that point. You said we was just getting out of slavery. Are, are you all familiar with Tulsa, Arizona? I mean, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. So that was something. Here we come from a historical. We come from a historical black neighborhood, the Ville, where most of us attended um, Perna Middle or Sumner. Right. That was never taught to us. And it happened what 1919. We're talking about a, a community that have multiple blank uh, back black owned banks, hotels, stuff like that. The competition, the, the amount of the dollar that circulated in that in those neighborhoods. I mean, just went around like 20 some times movie theaters, hospitals, all these all these things, a whole black city. That was so flourishing and, 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 and so vibrant that it was burnt down and buried to the point to where if you even speak about those things, it sounds like a fairy tale, sound like Wakanda, right? But it actually it actually existed. Something that our generation knows nothing about. We don't know anything about waking up, going in a neighborhood that has a black owned grocery store, multiple black owned grocery store, multiple black owned car insurance place, black owned um, banks and get those loans and stuff like that. We don't know about waking up in a neighborhood that's a that's full of black owned entrepreneurs and they're not shooting, they're not trying to rob each other. They're working with each other. We have no idea what that was like, but we was taught and bred that we can't do that. But it actually happened, actually in multiple cities, from, from Kenlock to, to Tulsa, Arizona. Every time we get it, we lose it. So if, if they burning it down and not able to pass away, because those, those people from Tulsa were so traumatized, they never spoke about it. They never spoke about what happened. Those people, those surviving people woke up to terror, to, to gunshots, their homes being burned, wake, going out in the street and seeing people that they love from their neighborhood shot dead in the street. So that was terrifying to them. So, so much to the point to where it just seems like a fairy tale. You know, I know we get too deep on this and stuff. So let me. No, let me no, no. We, we showing we showing the public that we ain't all sports in 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 in, in, in Wakanda. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it. It takes it takes a serious effort. It takes likable minds. We have to get serious. We have to get out of the entertainment um, aspect that that we all strive to be. You know. In the black community, you have to be able to shoot, hoop, do whatever to make it. We don't celebrate those individuals that they get up, they have that articulate about themselves and, and they make it. We don't really celebrate those individuals like we really should. You know what I'm saying? So I got a question. Go. So if I make it as a black man, do I have a requirement? Is I mean, I guess I already know the answer. Yeah. But do I have a requirement to do you a certain right. thing to help help a community, help 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 my community that I come from? Yes. If 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 you make it, it's your requirement to me to bring the people up underneath you and bring your people up with you. If you make it and you're the only one, and it ends with you. You failed, as far as I'm concerned. So when you make it, what are you talking about? Dollar amount? You saying you make it with a million dollars? Not a not not a million per se, but just being wealth and having influence and power. So you, being you, able to bring. I, I listened to something about uh, Kevin Hart, and he was talking about his brand. He brings up all these comedians. It ain't just Kevin Hart. He bringing up. A stable of comedians. Right. Where Cat Williams is just Cat Williams. That's a fact. Cat Williams failed. Kevin Hart, no matter what, he's bringing up more people. That is what we're talking about. So if you are for. successful, you got to go and bring up, bring up your community, make more of you, duplicate you. Right. To get more. That's how we come together and be more powerful. So, yes, if you make it, that's why LeBron, LeBron is LeBron. He doing it. But if you make it and you ain't help bringing somebody up, 
you fail, in my opinion. I agree. Okay. I, and I think some some people they okay with failing. I think some of our brothers they okay with failing. They they they're not looking back. They don't want you to surpass them. If if, if right, you, they so, they don't want that. They want to be the man. You know what I'm saying? They want to be able to hold you down and look down on you as opposed to, like you said, enlightened, educated. Listen, everybody don't want to be educated. Everybody don't want to the game plan and the blueprint. They just want the end result. Give me the money. I'm going to blow it, though, but give me the money. Right, like but it should to, be. But, but to be fair, but to be, I mean, to, but to be fair, though, those things weren't just something that popped up in our heads. Those things have been ingrained in us for hundreds of years. That's a fact. That's a that's a fact. It ain't like listen. And we're we're still we're we're still trying to break those mental chains that have been instilled in us to 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 clash with each other, to you know look at each other, you know not be able to congratulate once, congratulate each other for making it, but instead looking at my brother, you know how he get that. It's kind of like even we did it when. We was talking about investments, CDs over stocks. We try to educate. We, you know, we got that thing going. We try to educate ourselves. I'm That's curious right. to see. So then, the the key is not only do that, then start teaching some of these young brothers that's coming along. That's a fact. You can't just keep. I mean, once we learn it, we got to start teaching our kids. All of our kids are. 20s like we got to start teaching them the game so they they can move it on so we can start growing and multiplying because the, tri- the the trickery is they they see the end result they see the wealth they see the jewelry they see the homes they don't see the hard work they don't see the IQ of what it takes in the in the grind of educating yourself you know what I'm saying reading contracts and going through contracts is not easy you know what I'm saying you want to be able to to arm yourself to be able to ask questions and challenge questions because you don't want to be put in a situation where them two lawyers know each other and you don't know what the hell is going on. And mm-hmm. they got a, they got a, under, they got a deal under the table on your ass. They got slick words in there it, that'll get you. You don't have, you know, it's nothing wrong with being ashamed. I don't care how old you are. I'm 46 years old. If I don't understand something, I'm going to ask you, what is this? And what does this mean? I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by that. Yeah, I didn't, you used to ask all kind of questions in high school. Hey, and when I played football, <laughs> my, my football coach would, would get upset because I would be in the huddle before he break it. Hey, what if he do this and what if he do that? I would ask question after question. That way, game time, I didn't have to go back to him and ask him what to do because I already knew it. I asked all those questions in practice. <laughs> I mean, listen, when I was a kid, my, I didn't have no voice like that. I, I couldn't ask no questions. So I, when I got outside the house, I had to ask all these questions. Comic books is what opened my mind up like that. So I'm going to give everybody the Birdman hand rub. You know, we had a nice, robust discussion right there. I, I like that. That's you know, we got away from the normal topics. Yeah. You know, I think I think that's that's a good thing for to help grow our podcast because I don't want us to be pigeonholed. That's a fact. Into, you know, certain subjects. So, you know, it was a nice, good, robust conversation. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up with Swerp of the Week. Um, And I will start off with Swerp, with my Swerp of the Week, because usually I don't have one, but I got one this week. So my Swerp of the Week goes to the state of Georgia for voting for Herschel Walker. Like, how in the hell... How in the fuck is this possible to we gotta do a, they gotta do a runoff on what December 6th because Herschel Walker and and and, and Warnock are, are neck and neck. I just I just it's crazy. I, I, it, it, it baffles me. So I'm giving everybody in the state of Georgia from Atlanta to Valdosta, y'all are the swerp of the week. <laughs> That's iron too, because ain't no way. Hey, my swear for the week is that uh the, the college shooter killed those guys, man. Uh, another another school shooting in here in America. Um that just broke my heart, man. You know, so that's my swear for the week. 
I hate to say man's out loud, but Wakanda forever. <laughs> with the twerk of the week. <laughs> two and a half hours. Well, the first 10 minutes was good, but the rest, two two hours and 20 minutes of Nah, back there. Did you go see, did you go see Internals, the Eternals? No. Get out of here, man. That's, <laughs> that's your swerve for the week, the Eternals. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, but Wakanda, I just, it was, Swerp is Wakanda forever. The Swerp of the week for me. <laughs> now, 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 understand. We can't dispute anyone's Swerp of the week. If I know their Swerp of the week is their Swerp of the week. Their Swerp of the week. All right, Jay, what you got? It's been one year today. I believe it's today since Dolph, you know, passed away. Rest swerp of people. the week. Yeah, rest in peace, Dolph. Long live Dolph. It's um, the two young men who took his life for no reason. Uh, he was home participating in a charity event, trying to give back to his community, ran up on him, gunned him down. Uh, he didn't deserve that. So it's we, we spoke about building up our community and, you know, building wealth. That Dolph was all about that. He was he was that was a main uh, theme in his life and in music. So Swerp of the Week, the two young men who ended their life, you know, taking Dolph's life. For no reason, they're my swerp of the week. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, um, I think this was a very, very good episode. I think we're gonna gain a lot of subscribers, not because of that Wakanda shit, but <laughs> we're gonna gain a <laughs> lot of subscribers based on this ep- this episode. Uh, I want to shout out Christina G once again for for posing her question. Christina, I hope, I hope that uh, I hope that she got. She could pull a little something from anything that we said. And I just want to make sure that she continues to check us out. And anybody else out there, hey, give us a shot. You know, we might we might change your life. That's a fact. So with that being said, we're going to sign off. Myself, Hot Rod, Rizzle, Ant Banks, Squeak, J-Rock, we out. We out. All right.